Super job. Pool. Let's I'm actually doing the right down below, of course. Let's pull You know the drill at this point. Pokemon faints, it dies. Catch one Pokemon per route and nickname it to set up for emotional trauma. But this time we're doing something a bit different. A two-person Nuzlocke. It's technically called a Soul Link, but no one knows what that means. So basically you and Person 2 play the same Pokemon game at the same time following the same Nuzlocke rules. However, your Pokemon are linked, which means if my starter dies, player 2's starter also dies, and they can't do anything about it. Plus, we can only have one primary typing for both of our teams combined. So if I catch a water type and add it to my team, Person 2 can't have a water type at all on theirs. And Sherry on top, all Pokemon are randomized. I can walk into the grass at any point and accidentally find God. And maybe he'll just kill all my animals right then and there. So with all these new rules in place, I needed to find a player too. One who's a real Pokemon master, able to adapt, improvise, and strategize all at the drop of a hat. And who else other than Pokemon master himself? Jacob Alvarad, who at this point in time has a 50-50 Nuzlocke win ratio. Here's our Pokemon Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Soul Link Nuzlocke. We both go downstairs, barely greet our mom, and immediately beeline it to Professor Elm's lab to see what Pokemon he's got for us, because we don't know. They're random, in case you forgot what I just said. We stroll up to him and he pats Jacob on the head and goes, Here, choose from these three. I picked them specially for you. Torterra, Tentacruel, or Ludicolo. All right, what do I get? Why not make you Ariators? Awesome. Jacob takes that? Torterra and I take Mankey and we name them Franklin. On our way to talk to Mr. Pokemon, Jacob runs into a Regirock in a random patch of grass, which just flat out explodes on him. No one died, luckily, but also, oh my god. We get an egg and immediately Professor Elm calls and tells us he's been robbed and bullied. You really couldn't handle being alone for 10 minutes, could you? On our way back to help a grown adult, we stumble onto a shady figure who scoffs, challenges us to a battle with Pokemon he stole from Elm, which we immediately win scoffs again, then drops his wallet, passport, credit card, driver's license, social security, target gift oh, card on the ground in front of us for the world to see. Dude, get your crap together. You can't be doing that when you're a wanted fugitive. Back in the lab, Elm is crying on the floor as the police and our neighbor are trying to comfort him, and the police asks us if we saw anyone suspicious. Yes, we saw his info. Now here we get to name our rival. Jacob and I try to think of someone that we both shared some sort of rivalry with. When we remembered a certain professional Pokemon Nuzlocker has been consistently oh reacting and critiquing our Nuzlocke so far, some of his comments were more critical than others and directed at one of us more than the other. Mr. Policeman, his name is Jan. Hi, Jan. <laughs> Let's see if you can destroy us from the inside out. Anyway, our neighbor takes us out to some grass to show us how to catch a Pokemon, runs into Articuno, catches it in a Pokeball in the green, and turns to us and goes, See? Just like that. They give us some Pokeballs and we can finally start our journey. We both run around in the grass and our first encounters are Barboach and Houndoom. Okay. This would have been awesome on, for Jacob if he could catch the dang thing. Since we only had Pokeballs, Houndoom was not oh, getting in the ball no matter bad. what, and we ended up not getting that pair. But you know, it's all right. There's plenty more encounters like Hoppip Farfetch'd Hop school? that Jacob accidentally kills, or Geodude Gyarados that Jacob accidentally kills, or Tyro Charizard that Jacob accidentally kills. Hey, why do I get this? And Jacob gets all this. And why do you keep killing him, Jacob? But finally, in the ruins of Elf, we managed to catch a new pair. Sand slash Camerupt. Not bad at all. We try to name them Michael, but both misspell it. So welcome to the team, Michels. Then on Route 32, we catch Totodile Beedrill, which is also pretty good. Mainly for just me. We started combining the two Pokemon to create their names, so we ended up somehow with Bedrodo. We ran into a trainer who had a frickin' Palkia on his team. Fun fact, did you know if you Google Palkia type weakness, Google will tell you that he's weak to fairy? and Salamence. No other we dragons, just dragon. Salamence. <laughs> so Jacob and I started joking I around every like time we saw a Palkia. Oh no, if only I had a oh, Salamence. Really uh oh, don't have a Salamence <laughs> over here. Oh, it was kind of yes. strange how many Palkias we ran into, but that didn't stop us from bullying every single one. So we take on Faulkner, the first gym leader, who has Kyogre Bronzar and Metagross Dragonair. Oh my god. After a lot of difficulty, we both managed to beat him with no casualties. I don't know how that happened but hey everyone's yeah, all right oh he's gonna take himself out oh, oh my god how about some encounters to lighten the mood oh hello
Whoa! Very serious. Shuckles, Suicune. <laughs> that Jacob accidentally no! kills. In Azalea Town, we challenge Bugsy, who luckily wasn't as stacked as Faulkner. And as we step outside, Jan, who is surprised we haven't been demolished yet. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Challenges us to a battle, which we also win. <laughs> we run into Ma Wild Deoxys in the forest, who someone accidentally kills, and make our way to Goldenrod, where there's a security guard that'll give us both a Pokemon. He hands me a Porygon too, which I'm ecstatic about. Turns to Jacob and gives him Reggie Gigas, <laughs> which we can't use because they're both normal types. No, of all no, the legends yeah. you had to get, of course you get the only normal type besides actual god. We beat Whitney and in the <laughs> National Park find Piplup Flaffy, even, which we uh, named Plap. The, uh, I pitched to Jacob that I'm willing to trade the Bedrodos to make room for this new pair, so he essentially switches Beedrill with Flaffy, which we shake on. Welcome to the team, Plaps. And then my Plap immediately almost gets killed. Oh, <laughs> Like I'm still psychic, so that's <laughs> I'll fix it, I'll fix it. Got <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. We find Dragonair <laughs> Shepard, which is an actually insane pair we could use right away. That's very good, those are two, but like... Make yeah, it. I ended up killing that one. Right. Look, I'm sorry, Jacob. It is harder right, than it looks to catch these things. We pour water on the strange trees on Route 36 that actually seven. turn out to be Cradily Silcoon. We kind of named them Dilly Do and could have added them to the team as Death Fodder, but we ended up forgetting to. Which is, yeah, a pretty silly mistake, but what's the worst that could happen? Who needs Death Fodder in a Nuzlocke? Jacob and I make it to Ekratik and walk into the Burn Tower. As we are about to go down there, Jan runs up and is like, you're only trying to catch Suicune to make yourselves look stronger than you actually are. Yeah. And we're like, no, we killed him a while ago. But he still wanted to battle, probably to show off the Mew he somehow found. Oh, we beat right. him yet again, go downstairs, scare off the dogs, right. and go challenge so, Morty. Uh, Jacob Morty didn't have himself. any trouble for the team Morty had for him. But for me, I was having a bit of a harder time because... He had a Lugia, which neither me nor my team could even handle. All I could do was bubble beam it with Plap and pray I don't get crit one shot as Jacob just sits there watching. But it ended up working out. We arrive in Olivine and climb the giant lighthouse, almost falling to our literal death along the way. Reach Jasmine at the top, who's like, climb back down and go get medicine for Amphi and Seanwood. And we were like, we almost died getting here. Surfing to Seanwood, we encountered Obama Snow Pupitar. And I know what you're thinking. Yep. Yeah, we did catch did them. Avatar hey, joined the team nice. immediately, oh, and suddenly we've got a pretty powerful lineup going on. Also, a random guy in town gifted us a Mewtwo and Weeping Bell. Oh, wait, who got the Mewtwo? Finally! I'm the one with the legend now! But we had to box him because we couldn't have two grass types. <laughs> All of this sudden shared luck combined with our zero death win streak got us feeling pretty confident. Which naturally means it's time to get kicked in the throat. Specifically by a black belt martial artist, um, Gym Leader Chuck, Chuck was indescribably tough in the most bullcrap way possible. For me, Jacob had no trouble at all because he's Jacob. He had a Kingdra, which I brought Obamatar out for. Nothing else on my team could really do anything against it. The main drawback of this is Obamatar's snow warning ability, which creates hail, damaging every Pokemon, including my own. That's not an ice type, which is pretty inconvenient in a Nuzlocke. I even made a a teeny tiny comment about it when I first got him. I can, I can, I'm gonna call it, Snow's gonna kill one of my Pokemon. Kingdra goes down and Chuck's only other Pokemon, he's only got two, is Frostlass, who if you don't know, has Snow Cloak. Snow Cloak makes the Pokemon 20% harder to hit if there's hail. You wanna know how many Pokemon in Gen 4 have this ability? Five. Three of which being Mamoswine. You wanna know how many Pokemon there are in Heart Gold Soul Silver? 493. Now, I know these odds sound pretty awful already, <laughs> but you know what this process odd. does? Oh, do she uses Ominous, ominous Wind. Ominous, ominous Wind has a 10% chance to boost every single stat of the user. She gets the stat boost twice in a row. That's one strong process. After a lot of strategizing, we both decided the best option for us would be to send in Mychil as death fodder to heal up Plap, because he is the only one that can really do anything at this point. And what happens? Let's go, Plat. Please don't get another stat oh, boost. Oh, does it live? Boost. You're, he's good. He's so good. He's no, good. no. Oh, oh my cross last crit one shots Michael as soon as he comes out. Our first deaths. Poor camera up. He was so proud for making it out of Jack's gym and then just falls over dead for no reason. I got Plat healed up and basically started heal stalling, which, sure, isn't a noble strategy. But it is what it is. Come on. After literally struggling against my own bad luck for what felt like hours, finally, Frostlass goes down. 
guys. Through the confusion. Finally. Like, what you have, like, Holy shit. Like, she she just practically on. drags me out of the gym, and we head to the BC. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to add a pair of the back on Route 35, which was a Charmeleon <laughs> Dawn fan named Darfell. Ooh, a fantastic oh duo. Okay. I was admittedly, and I think justifiably, still really salty about what we just went through, but Jacob convinced me that we should just move on. We got our Darfells leveled up and returned to Olivine to feed Amphi the medicine that we picked up so Jasmine would finally do her job. And check this out. Oh my god. Look at R2 screens real quick. No, it's alright. She also had a Geoxys. We headed to Mahogany Town, catching and adding Nidoran and Beberil, named Beryl to the team. And in the Lake of Rage, Jacob caught a Kyogre, paired with my Swalot. We never used this pair, but I just wanted to mention it for reasons. We approach the glistening shadow of the Lake Beast, activate the encounter, and find a shiny... Banerian Dawn fan. Oh, they already Not, have a Dawn fan. you know, the best. But hey, free shiny Pokemon. Doesn't hurt to cat... Oop, I killed it. That's again, my bad. Sorry. Lance walks up to us and goes, Hi, I'm Lance. Grabs us by the wrist, kicks down the door to the Mahogany Town 7-Eleven, kills one of the guys in there, and runs into the rocket hideout where he continues to wipe out any living organism he finds down there. Classic Lance. We decided to copy him and beat up all the executives and their power generator. Right before we fly to Goldenrod, we pick up the 7th badge and then continue curb stomping Team Rocket. We were getting a bit too comfy though and as Jacob wasn't paying attention mainly because he just got a chicken sandwich Obamatar was killed by a golem's earthquake Wait, did he go for dig? Oh no that was a really bad blow it stung much more because we weren't paying attention but we did have to move on especially since we were literally in the middle of a gang fight we shoved our way to rocket executive and big boss archer and give him a bit of a throat chop so he would calm down and stop doing whatever it is he was doing and everyone is saved on our way to blackthorn we catch frost slash corefish which put me into a vengeful trauma spiral Oh, that's uh, unfortunate because Obamatar went down too. You. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jacob caught himself both a Suicune and an Az Elf. We arrived and took on Claire, who led with a that's Mewtwo against me, which at this point I shouldn't even be surprised. But all the rest of our team was pretty much a pushover for both of us. Claire's a bad sport and refused to think we were good trainers, so we talked to the old man behind the gym and he's like, So do you beat your Pokemon? And we're like, no. And he's like, Awesome. Claire, give him the stupid badge. What? So now we can head to the Elite Four. <laughs> Hey oh, guys, I think you should go Can't fight a horde of like Asian a women in Equitique. Uh, so we enter the Equitique Theater and start fighting the women, and the second girl for me sends out Ambipalm. As I switch to Franklin, it screeched, which I <clears throat> didn't pay attention to, and Ambipalm double hit killed Franklin. Why is that knocked out? Not even a crit. I guess the our starters died. Dude, yeah, the starters. that was really no. sad. We were about to make it to the Elite the Four with them, and bam. It's all right. Not alive yeah, anymore. Yeah. They were with us through everything. Before, right? Pretty much the backbone to our teams. Man. Jan's gonna make so much fun of us when he finds out. As we're still mourning, the last Kimono Girl rest spams with Waylord. Do you have any dignity, woman? Oh, hey, wait, We're wait, wait, lamenting wait, wait, wait. over here. We try to leave yeah, and the girls are all, No, no! Go catch the legendary Pokémon! Hmm. Oh, I can't He's already got friend three, friend so I head to Whirl Islands and Jacob scales the bell tower, and what Whirl legends do we so find? The legendary so Zangoose and Loudred. <laughs> Finally, we have some freedom again, and as soon as we touch the water in Newbark to head to Victory Road, what pops up from the bottom of the lake but Entei himself? And oh. Well. oh my god! <laughs> basketball! Yes! You got an Ente! Hello, Dodie! That's going in the box because fire types. We catch Cascoon <laughs> Reggie Rock in Victory Road, and heading towards the exit, Jan sprints up from behind us, and I iconically say, This is your last chance to kill one of our Pokemon, Jan! No, 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 and oh, what no. happens? He does this. Oh, boy, no! oh my god! Oh, Counter on the What happened? Oh! Oh! No. oh. oh. Uh, uh, he killed one of our Pokemon. Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. Darfell was an incredible pair we've had since the fifth gym, and we really grew to lean on. We lost quite literally half our team right before the Elite Four. 
Mm. We beat Jan for the last time, enter the Indigo Plateau, and immediately bolt to the PC to see what kind of damage control we can do. After a very long time of trying to stitch together the best teams possible, we ended up with this. Ampharos and Polion, Bibaril Nidoqueen, Beautifly Cradley, Dodrio Ente, and Victory Bell Mewtwo. Okay. I know, I know! Wow, Jin, super balanced. You've got Mewtwo and Entei, and Jacob has a Beautifly. Look, I, I, this run. is the best we could do, I promise. <laughs> tell him, Jacob, tell fault. him. Oh, anyway, man. big right. deep breath. Here we go into the unknown depths of the Elite Four. Will, Koda, and Bruno were all no problem at all. We breezed right past them. Everything was going great. This is fine. Yeah, done. All right, well, what about Karen now? Yeah, oh, oh! Oh, that was close. Oh, God. The barrel's still up, though. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I win these. Oh, On the other hand, get... Karen was not as nice. Oh, no, I mean, have... what if he does any charge move? Uh, okay, he just did cross chop. He's dead. It's fine. I was safe to find. I'm just out. paranoid. Oh my god. 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 Guys, we're so sorry we got you killed in the first, like, 15 minutes of having you. We ended up getting out of the battle with no more casualties, but facing Lance with a team of 4 each is really not ideal, to say the least. But we walked up to him nonetheless. Whether we win or lose here, this is our last battle. He leads with Fionn and Ledian, which we were both like, ha ha ha, Lance, is this all you've got? And then he hits us with the no. Jacob was up against his Porygon Z, Rampardos, Licky Licky, Zapdos, and Plusle. And even though it's a pretty stacked team, he was holding his own and getting through them really well. On my end, I was dealing with a Giga impacting Snorlax, which I really had nothing for. I just had to pray for no crits and as many misses as possible. It goes down eventually, and what does he send out next? Palkia. Another Palkia. Oh, very pity for Cheetah's I could really use a Salamence right about now. <laughs> this is what we get. We bullied Palkia so much during our journey here. Looking at my team, I don't have anything that can handle Palkia either, except for Mewtwo. And what happens? Maybe. He gets Spatial Rand crit one shot turn one. I am in a lot of trouble. I took so much time getting past Snorlax that Jacob was already done with his battle, so all he could do was watch this massacre from the sidelines. I sent out Dillydew to confuse Stalem and just try to chip away at him with basically nothing. And my god was I lucky, because if Palkia hit one more crit at any point, Dillydew and the run was over. And I was forced to dance on that line for a long time. But eventually, Dillydew lands the finishing blow. I was so proud. The pair that we caught so early on and deemed as death fodder was the one saving us. We're so sorry for doubting you, Dilly Doo. Thank you for sticking by us and not dying. But that was only half of Lance's team, might I remind you. Plap took out his Sand Slash, which stunk, but Bastiodon came out, tanked Plap's Surf, and Bastion's killed him with Metal hit. Burst. I was in shock yeah, with that one. one that was our second scary. oldest pair. Ever since our Franklins died, Jacob and I both started seeing the Plaps as our star members. <laughs> Beryl came out and Revenge finished the Bastiodon, and Lance's last Pokemon was big ol' hard hitting tanky frickin' Azumarill. I sent Dilly Doo back out because Beryl would die immediately as bad as and Azumarill started games. the chipping game again. Yeah, if that wasn't bad enough, Azumarill set up the rain and an aqua ring for itself, which That's turned annoying. this fight from, uh, to, ah, uh, this awful one on one <laughs> lasted 10 whole minutes. I slap him, he slaps back much harder, and then heals, and then I heal, but eventually, Dilly do wins the stalling go, battle, and Azumarill goes down. In an unpredictable turn of events, Dilly do saved us from utter defeat. What an adventure we just went on. Insane encounters, insane bullcrap, friends, death, bullying, and the Dilly Doos. Thanks for going on this journey with me, Jacob. I quite literally couldn't have done it without you. And a salute to the buddies we made along the way. Except you. Oh my god. You guys can find the original video in the description.